All right, Tom Balator here with a walkthrough for problem number one in PSET 4. First of all, I assume that you've already read very thoroughly the specification. So let's take a look at that quickly. PSET 4 specification, you've got two main pages. First of all, introduction, which sets the stage for this basically Scrabble game that we'll be implementing here. So you've gone through this. Importantly, you've also looked at what the sample output should look like. Okay. The next thing here is getting started. You should have already downloaded the zip file. You should have unzipped it and you should have it stored somewhere in a folder that you can access. Once you've got that, you're also supposed to test your code. You can test it, and I'm gonna do this in Spider by running the code. That's really nice, because out of the box, it's gonna produce something. So let's see what happens here. I've already opened this up in Spider. Here's my code. And if, and just remember how many lines was it? It's, wow, 260, okay. If we go with run, you should get this output loading word list from file, um, 83,000 and change words loaded, play game not yet implemented. So that means it's worked. You have not yet implemented the full game yet. Okay, so problem number one. Let's take a look at that. If you go to right here, word scores. This is assuming you've read this, you see what you're supposed to be doing. You can also reminder of the scoring rules if you forgot that from the previous thing here. But all we want to do is just simply make some code that returns a score for the, the word that's been played. Okay, so let's go to Spider and let's take a look at that. So we're working right now on get word score right here. So to do, let's remove this comment right here and let's write some pseudocode. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to figure, we want to calculate the score for a word that has been played by the player or has been submitted by the player. So we want to keep track of the score and then we want to report that at the end. So what is the score in this sense? The score for a word is, as we know, it's the sum of the points for the letters in the word. So Simply, we want to iterate all over all the letters in the word and add up how much each letter, how many points are there for, are for each letter. So for each letter in the word, we'd like to what? Add the value of the letter to the score. Okay, now how do you get that value? That's in the dictionary called what is it? It's up here on the top here. Scrabble letter values. And remember, to get a value out of a dictionary, you can just index into it like we were doing indexing into lists or into strings. So that's how you can do that. You should remember how to do that. Okay, so once you've got that, you might think that you're done and you could simply, you know, return the score to whoever called this function. Now, Scrabble's not that simple. It's not just simply the letters in the word. There are a few extra conditions. Like, for example, the longer the word, the better. Right? So if you read right here, it says that multiplied by the length of the word. So the total up here is going to be the total of the letters in the word, but we also have to multiply that by the length. So multiply the score by the length of the word. Okay, and once you've done that, your score has probably gone up if you've got more than one letter word, right? Okay, now that's not the end of it though. You have to do one more thing and then you're done. Simply, if you've got, if you've used all N letters, you know, whatever the length of this is, I think it starts at seven. If you've used all seven letters, then that means you get a bonus of 50 points. So you've got another condition here. If you used all n letters in the word, then add 50 to the score. And once you've turned all this pseudocode into real code, be sure to open up that file called test underscore ps4a.py and run that. It won't work right now because I've still got it in pseudocode and it'll give this silly syntax error. But if you go back here and if you, let's say, delete that pseudocode, run that again, you'll see what the output will look like. Well, hopefully you won't be getting failure, but you'll, you'll get some ideas about what might be wrong with your code if there are problems. But hopefully this will just say success.